Hello, I'm Robert Costa, and this is the Washington Week Extra, where we pick up online where we left off on our broadcast. Joining me around the table, Yagana Tobadi of Reuters, Michael Shear of the New York Times, Nancy Cordes of CBS News, and Dan Balls of the Washington Post. Tonight, we pick up with President Trump's promise to streamline the federal government. The plan, outlined in Thursday's cabinet meeting, is part of the president's pledge to make government more efficient. Proposals include a possible merger of the education and labor departments, taking the food stamp program out of the Department of Agriculture and moving it into the Department of Human and Health Services, HHS, and merging the Department of Agriculture and the Food and Drug Administration's food safety regulators. Why now, Mike? What, what, is this administration, amid all the immigration talk, they're moving on the federal government? Well, look, I think there's a lot of suspicion um, among advocates for these various programs that this is not a uh, sincere effort to try to improve the programs and consolidate uh, uh, waste, waste and fraud and abuse, uh, but rather is, a, is, is kind of undergirded by the president's um, antipathy towards, and, and, and conservative Republicans' antipathy towards the big sprawling bureaucracy, and that what's really uh, intended here is to try to uh, shrink some of these programs and, and, and eliminate the ones that they don't want to, that they don't think are effective, that they don't think uh, should be in existence. And I think, um, you know, nothing that this administration does makes a whole lot of sense in terms of timing, in terms of political, you know, when something would happen makes a lot of sense. So, you know, I, I think this is when they, the, you know, this particular piece of the project came forward, and the fact that it's swamped by uh, the immigration debate, I don't think they they manage very well. Where does this go on Capitol Hill? I mean, there are a lot of conservatives in, in the Republican Party on Capitol Hill. Is this something that they, they want to champion ahead of the midterm? I think it's amazing how little attention this got on Capitol Hill. I mean, partly there That's was... Why it's the the <laughs> there why was... It's the <laughs> <laughs> no, but it really is striking. Normally, this is the kind of thing that Democrats would be railing against and, right. and conservatives would be cheering. But first of all, it got uh, overshadowed by the, right. the immigration crisis. But also... Um, you know, well, two things. First of all, it requires congressional approval, and you know, Congress is unlikely to to take a move like this, especially in an election year. But second, uh, there are real questions about whether this administration really has uh, the staff and the expertise to successfully make huge changes to the federal bu mm. bureaucracy like this. I mean, they're saying if if you can't even keep track of children and who they who's which parents they belong to, how, how do we know that you could efficiently merge multiple agencies? So it, it really just got very little attention. But these agencies, education and health, used to be together. Well, there, between 1932 and 1984, there were 100 proposals put forward by presidents to reorganize parts of the federal government. Almost every president at one point in their presidency decides the federal government needs to be reorganized. One of the things in, in this proposal is to consolidate job training programs. This has been a proposal that goes Obama back... did it. Goes back... Multiple times, yeah. ...many presidencies. It rarely gets done. It's a very complicated thing to do. I think, on the one hand, give them the benefit of the doubt. The federal government is big, sprawling, inefficient, and things get put in places for no particular reason other than that there's some constituency that puts them there, and it creates inefficiencies that, if you're trying to run these programs, you would like to fix them. But the other reality is, as Nancy says, it's very difficult to get these through Congress. And even if you were able to reorganize in the way they're proposing, it doesn't necessarily mean the laws will get changed easily because those, they would have to change legislatively. I wonder what the cabinet secretaries think. Who gets <laughs> to do that top job? Let's see, the boss is in favor of consolidating, um, you know, education and, and labor. And, you know, the education department dates back to Jimmy Carter. It's not like we have to keep these departments forever just right. because we had them at one mm -hmm. point. Um, in some ways, it makes a lot of sense to consolidate um, education and labor together. Um, but I think um, even people who would uh, support such a move in theory are suspicious of the Trump administration's motives and also ability to actually uh, carry it out. Mm -hmm. And of course, I mean, they're against uh, waste and abuse and fraud and, and bloat in some parts of the government. But then when it comes to the part that I cover, DHS, sort of immigration enforcement, border patrol, they're very much in favor of expanding uh, th those capacities. 
Another thing that I, I noticed was Mick Mulvaney, the head of the OMB and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, out in front, always mentioned as a possible mm -hmm. chief of staff if General Kelly should step down from his post. Mulvaney, everywhere in this administration. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, once you have at least two jobs, I mean, the, the size of the limit, it seems like. Um, but look, part of that is that um, President Trump is, um, you know, he, he likes loyalty, but he also in particular likes people who are pushing forward his particular agenda, right? This is why Scott Pruitt is still in mm -hmm. uh, his job at, at EPA, because yeah. it's, 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 you know, amid all the scandals involving him, he's pushing forward President Trump's deregulatory agenda. And Mulvaney has been particularly effective in, uh, you know, in doing what President Trump wants to do. The seeds of this were actually in the first Mulvaney budget a year right. ago. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, an idea to shrink the federal government. Which uh, was dramatically. dismissed because, Which was be dismissed. because the, the president's first budget proposal is always dismissed as right. sort of dead on arrival, but it, that's right, it was there. It was a signal of where he thought they ought to try to go. Mm -hmm. And finally, the passing of an editorial icon of the right. Charles Krauthammer was a Pulitzer Prize winning columnist and pundit who helped shape Republican ideology and at times broke with it. He is credited with defining the Reagan doctrine to explain President Reagan's foreign policy, and he was an advocate for the Iraq war. He was also a critic of both President Barack Obama and President Trump. A diving accident while attending Harvard Medical School left him paralyzed from the waist down. Despite his disability, he graduated and went on to become a leading political commentator. He died Thursday from cancer. He was 68 years old. We've seen uh, from, from Republicans on Capitol Hill this outpouring uh, for a crowd hammer. It, right. it's, to me, what was notable about what I heard from those on Capitol Hill, was there are still traditional Republicans, traditional mm -hmm. conservatives who do crave that ideology, that kind of conservatism, even in the era of, of President Trump. And the civility. I think that's something that you heard from both Democrats and Republicans this week, is that you know, they miss the kind of civility uh, that both sides employed to debate, to agree, to disagree, and to a lot of them, Charles Krauthammer really um, uh, exemplified that. I thought it was really touching and a great reminder what he said in his last column when he said that he doesn't have any regrets and he lived the life he wanted to live. And I think that's a great reminder to all of us uh, to think about what kind of life, you know, it can be really difficult, you know, just day to day, keeping track of everything that's going on and everything that you need to do. But, you know, important to think about the big picture and what kind of life you he, want to lead. He had very clear conservative views, although ironically he wrote speeches for Walter Mondale um, <laughs> many years ago. Um, uh, but in having those conservative views, he brought subtlety and nuance to it. He had an independence of mind in the way he approached those, um, so that whether you agreed or disagreed with the basic overarching point, there were things in the way he made arguments uh, that made him quite readable. And I, I know he was, you know, he was a columnist on our op-ed page, and almost every Friday when his column posted on our website, it became the, f the number one read piece on the website. And, and, I, and I think that both the column and, and the tone and the voice in the column and his sort of mannerism, you know, in on shows like this or, show, you know, television shows and the like where people got to, to know him that way, people crave that kind of civility, that kind of gentlemanly, I mean, you know, his, his points were tough. His points were, I mean, he didn't mince words when he was, was going after, a, you know, a, an ideology or a, a, a politician that he disagreed with. Um, but in this era in particular, when we have become, you know, over the last, you know, two, two and a half years, used to the kind of language from the Oval Office and from a lot of other parts of the, you know, of the political process, it's, it's, uh, it's in some ways reassuring that people are kind of looking to somebody like that and say, gee, we need more of that. And he was a, it's a human story. I, I used to see him at different things in Washington and mm -hmm. for someone who was disabled he was he was a fighter always showed up a tough tough man and uh, we will miss Charles Crowdhammer that's it for this edition of the Washington Week Extra while you're online take the Washington Weekly Quiz where we test your knowledge of national news sports and even a little entertainment I'm Robert Costa see you next time